There I am, showing up on YouTube. All right, looks like we are live. So, hello everyone. For anyone viewing in the uh, live stream replay, welcome. I've got some new acquisitions that I want to show off that I didn't get to in the last live stream. Um, this time the live stream shouldn't cut out just unexpectedly. I had some issues with the iMac and the RAM recently and it finally went completely bad. <laughs> so I had to replace that RAM, but we are now up and running once again. So I'm I'm hoping that there will be no crashes or unexpected dropouts. Um, two things I, I have planned that I want to show off today are some old Power Macs. Um, wait, Power Macs? Power Macs, yeah. I put in the title Performa, but this is a... Power Mac, not a Performa. Maybe it is. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, once we get some viewers in here, I will start uh, showing off this magnificent beast of a computer, and it is a beast. <laughs> very much, very much a beast. But, um, spoiler, I've already, you know, started this thing up and taken a look at it. And it's actually in really good shape. The hard drive could use some help. It's a bit noisy and kind of loud, but um, doesn't sound like it's bad. And the screen geometry and um, color, just the focus, everything about it is perfect. It is just, it is great. So that was a nice treat to see that that was in such good shape. Thank you, YouTube, for telling me that I went live. That's, um, that's helpful. Anyway. <clears throat> I wonder if that's coming across on, on the stream. I can see, um, like a flicker, like if you've got a... Um, a light bulb that isn't at the same frequency as your camera, it kind of flickers a little bit. I see that going on, but it doesn't seem to actually happen on the stream itself once it's on YouTube. So, I hope that's okay. We'll see how that goes. In the chat, we have somebody finally, Captain Crunch, hello. I remember you from the last live stream. Thanks for joining us again. Hopefully this one won't be cut short because my iMac decided to crash. This, um, I was thinking about it just because it's something that I think about at random, that this iMac has actually been extremely reliable, but the more I started to think about it, it's actually been pretty unreliable. It's just, I've been able to fix it because I have the ability to do so. Um, under warranty, so it was like two or three years in, the optical drive died. Um, I put a disc in, it got kind of slow uh, to to eject, and then it just wouldn't eject the disc anymore, so that was fun. Um, <clears throat> the, the original one terabyte hard drive started to die, um, gave me a bunch of issues. Really weird issue also, uh, which I thought was a hard drive at first, it was actually the clock battery on this iMac was, it, it went bad like five years in, which is strange in my opinion. I wouldn't think a five-year-old modern iMac would have a battery that is dying and having some issues, but it did. And um, I think the issue had something to do with an error about MDS worker, something like that. And I just couldn't get online. Uh, it was very strange, very strange issue, very strange resolution, which was, of course, replacing the battery. Not something I would have expected, but 
Uh, there was that. What else have I done to this iMac? This poor thing has been apart so many times, but um, I'm probably going to keep it around for a very long time. Uh, in the chat, Yanks Rock 1000 says, Friday Night Max! Exclamation mark. Yes. Any night Max are just are, are fun anyway, but Friday Night Max are the best because then I have to have wine with them. I have my dog down here. Um, Alright, let's go ahead and fire up this. So this, and I'll go handheld with this, um, swap around the cameras here. So this is a Power Macintosh 5275LC. So I'm assuming that means it is a 75 megahertz computer LC standing, I assume, for low cost. So this, if I had to take a guess, and I maybe should have done the research beforehand, this would have been a, a low cost consumer, you know, kind of budget Mac. That's my best guess. Um, Power Mac 5200, so that's probably 1994 or thereabout. And uh, this one, so this thing is in actually pretty decent shape, all things considered. Um, I have another one down there, a different model, and it is quite yellow. But this one is not yellow all that much. You can see there was a little bit of tape right there that, you know, it yellowed around the tape, but it's white underneath the tape. Not too bad. And I guess I can show you around the back. This thing, by the way, is a very heavy machine. So there's the back. Um, pretty standard assortment of I.O. for the time. It's actually looking a bit barren now that I look at it. You've got all these blanking plates um, over the back of it, and... Yeah, I didn't notice that before, but maybe that has something to do with the LC um, part of the computer. Unfortunately, <laughs> this Mac has a little bit of an issue, as does the other one, and that is brittle plastics. And my goodness, are they brittle. Um, you can kind of make out there, right where my finger is here, that there are a lot of broken plastics. That is unfortunately something that is going to plague this computer for many years to come. It's only going to get worse. There's nothing I can really do about it. As soon as I pick this thing up, or even touch it in any way, excuse me, uh, it cracks, and I can hear it. So, yeah, uh, never going to ship this one. I think I have somebody locally who's interested, so I would give it off to them before I would ever consider shipping this thing. Um, let's see. I'm trying to get this back in frame the way I had it so that we can actually see something on video. Yeah, that'll work for now. Apple makes something low cost? Never thought I'd hear that. Yeah, back in the day, I suppose they did. Um, I guess the most modern equivalent to a low-cost Mac would have been when the Mac Mini was released in 2005 or so. Um, that was sold as a BYO KVM, bring your own keyboard video mouse. And it was sold as just a low-cost computer at, what, $699? Which is, I mean, you can get something so much better for so much less money, but Apple can't wait for the Mac Pro LC. Yeah, I think would they just call it the Mac? Because it wouldn't be a Pro thing at that point. Mm -hmm. Alright. Let's go ahead and fire this up. Now, I have a concern with where I have my mic placed. I know it's a little bit quiet, maybe, right now. I'm hoping it won't pick up too much of the Mac and all of its weird noises that it makes, but uh, we'll we'll go <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there, I suppose. I would like to kind of zoom in here with the mic and capture. Sorry about that. The lovely startup sound that this makes. It's um, 
it reminds me very much of elementary school firing up a lab of these computers all at once. So let's go ahead and whack the power button. Hope you were able to hear that at least a little bit before the hard drive spun up. Man, that, so that sound just really brings me back. Switch to this monitor. Let's see if we can get a little more in frame. Yeah, that's, that's good enough. Yeah, good enough for a YouTube video. So, um, you won't quite be able to tell in this video, but as I started mentioning before, this screen looks amazing. This is one of the best looking CRTs I have seen in recent years, um, since CRTs became obsolete, I should say. The geometry is perfect. I mean, these lines are, are crisp, but they are ex perfectly straight. Um, you can really tell, I mean, you probably can't, but you can tell on the screen here with this lovely mid-90s checkerboard pattern that uh, it, is, it is looking good. It is looking good for sure. Um, colors are great. Focus is great. It's just, it's really great. So, this thing's running Mac OS 8.6. Again, kind of bringing me back to... Um, I guess almost middle school but elementary school we use these in our school up until about 2002 maybe not this exact model but this kind of chassis style and they were slow then and they are slow now <laughs> that is for sure to move my windows around here got all the extensions loading up I don't notice anything interesting but I guess I don't really know what to look for Hopefully that white balance will resolve itself. That's probably complaining about the time. Yep. Um, coincidentally, it says it's the wrong time, but it's currently 10.02 p.m. where I am, and this is 9.01, as if it's only one hour off. Maybe that's a coincidence. Yeah, it's a coincidence. It says 1956. Let's go ahead and turn on that hey that made it a lot better didn't it I just want to look at my replay here to see if that actually made it better if that's just in my mind turn it on oh you know what? it was actually me moving that changed it not the light but we'll leave the light on anyway gives me a little bit more light um, my elementary school had iMac G3 is 2005 ish mine did as well and we retired the iMac G3s in, I think, around 2006. But, but the kicker is they were still running Mac OS 9. 9.2.2, 2, probably. Um, in 2005. The iMacs came to us in 2000, 2001 with Mac OS 9 pre-installed. And they never got upgraded. None of them. Not a single computer in the whole building, at least that I knew, as a you know, elementary school student who is knowledgeable about that kind of thing, um, and not a single one was running Mac OS X at all. All right, so we got everything fired up here. Um, this definitely definitely has some personal data on it. I won't be going through the people's data. Um, I've had a quick browse through this already before I took it home, and I didn't erase it, even though I was kind of supposed to but it's not going to leave this this house without the data being erased. I just wanted to be able to grab some some programs or some drivers or anything special that might still be on here. So uh, I'm not even going to click through any of these that have people's names on them because I don't want to deal with that. For internet we have AOL or America Online, not AOL I guess. An IE 4.5. 
see if we can log in. Actually, this might not be a good idea. <laughs> I don't want to show off anybody's name or anything on the screen. Didn't think that one through. Not name, but like screen name. And of course, because this is a 75 megahertz, it's slow as balls. So this is going to take forever. I didn't think this one through. That hard drive is crunching away. Alright. It's the best I can do. And, oh, yep, that definitely had somebody's name on it, but it is gone now. I like their username and a phone number or something. All right, we won't do that again. Um, IE 4.5 is on there. That's cool. What else do we got? Applications. I think we were just in there. Launcher items, script editor, simple text. What's in launcher items? And also, where is the sound? Isn't there supposed to be sound when things open up? Ooh. Sounds kind of quiet and weird. Alright. Um, I guess launcher items would be everything in this folder. And I'm stupid. <laughs> it's always awkward when I buy an old Mac and see resume.pdf on the desktop. Yeah, that is... Um, Kind of what happened with this one. Come on, white balance. Get your shit together. There are a lot of files on here that definitely have personal data on them. Um, I'm not going to open any of them, but I'm sure you'll see them as I scroll through stuff. Alright, so let's see what we have. You know what, first... Let's see what the specs of this thing are. I'm assuming it's a 75 megahertz, um, probably like 32 or 64 megs of RAM. I haven't actually looked at this yet. So 64 megs of RAM, Mac OS 8.6. That is not what I wanted to look at though. I wanted System Profiler. Can you guys hear that hard drive crunching away in the background? It is so... It's, it's nostalgic, in a way. Come on. Alrighty. 64 megs of built-in RAM, 75 megahertz, PowerPC 603. Cool, cool. Ethernet network. I don't think this thing has Ethernet built-in. I don't think the card is installed. I guess that won't really tell us, will it? Devices and volumes. It's probably got a 2 gig hard drive. 2 gig might even be kind of big. Maybe it's a 1 gig? Not even. 810 megabytes. Solid. This was definitely a low cost machine. I guess like one or two gig would have been pretty normal at the time, but yeah, um, <laughs> 810 megs is quite small. Now I'm I'm looking in my my OBS window to kind of navigate the screen here. I'm not looking at the screen, and I had to do a double take at what the hell this is. It is just as garbled as it is on the screen or on your screen. I wonder what that is. And also, there's a disc in here. So this... I don't know I don't know what that is supposed to be. Uh, what do we have for... A disc? Uh-oh. This doesn't feel like it's doing anything. The button on the front. Let's go ahead and... Drag the disc to the trash. See if that'll eject. Hopefully the drive isn't broken. Oh, there it is. We have... A disc. Doesn't say anything on it, it's just a uh, recordable disc. A React.js website is larger uh, than this entire hard drive. 
Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, Oregon Trail. That image and image dot sit. Is Oregon Trail on here? That would be pretty cool. That would 100% bring me back to school because that's like the only thing that we use these things for was playing Oregon Trail. I don't see anything that says Oregon Trail other than this. Can we open it? Is Stuff It installed? No. So there's this floppy disk behind me <clears throat> and when I turned this on to just test it out make sure it would show up on camera and whatever it popped out and I wonder what's on here so let's find out where is it? oh it's down here so it says untitled it's a PC formatted disk and nothing <laughs> it's blank Looks like it was formatted on a Mac because it's got the trashes folder. Alright, well that's disappointing. Uh, let's go ahead and eject. Ugh. That was always the coolest looking thing. Get that on camera just for the hell of it. It's so... Now that I know how these things work because I've taken them apart, it's kind of simple how it works. It just kind of spins and ejects the the disc, but they're, they're, they're so cool. <laughs> it's so cool that it does that. Drag it to the trash. Ah, oh, look at that. Nice. I'm going to look it up right now, but I wonder if this is... Put that back in there for safekeeping. Um, if this is a Super Drive Mac. I would assume it's not, because it's an LC version, but there were some Macs that had a a floppy drive that could read and write 400, 800, and 1.44 meg floppies. And these are pretty uncommon, but I've used them in the past as bridge machines. For example, my Power Mac 7500, and I think the 7200 as well. Was it 7300? I don't know. But both of them had um, uh, the Super Drive, and they also had an Ethernet connection. So I could put so I could download files on my modern iMac and then grab them through an FTP server I had set up on the Mac, put them on a floppy disk using the old Power Mac, and then read them on something much older like a, a compact Mac. So those are pretty useful. Um, what is this? A Power Macintosh 5275LC. See what we can find. I, I should have pulled this up before I even um, started the video. So, so according to the description on every Mac, um, one of the little sentences at the bottom says both this model and the consumer version, the Performa 5200 CD, were sold in North America. So. I may have been incorrect. I thought this was kind of a, a consumer-only edition, but it must have been education-only, maybe? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe somebody can tell me in the comments section. Let's go back to the comments here. Alright, nothing new. Um, what was I looking for? Ah. Yeah, standard disk, 1.44 meg. I, it doesn't really say whether or not it's compatible, but I'm going to assume it's not compatible with the older disks. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. So the screen um, sports 640 by 480, which is currently what it's at. Let's move this back up here. And I have to run it right now at 640 by 480 because it's the only way I can get 60 hertz out of it um, without probably some extension that allows me to do it because that is double what the webcam is running at so you don't get quick flickering bars you just kind of get this slow moving bar um, oh I lied 
uh, I can do 800 by 600 at 60 hertz. Oh, look at that. Cool. I'm looking at it on the the actual display, and it looks crisp. <laughs> it looks nice. But back to this for the video, so it makes things easier to see. I notice it's changed from um, thousands to 256, so let's put it back at thousands. Can't really tell, but it does look a little bit nicer. Cool. Let's check out the sounds. Yep, that sounds terrible. Oh. When it started up, it sounded fine. That just sounds awful. Weird. those alerts up so we can hear them. Wild Leap. Sounds like I'm in a Mac 84 live stream. Nice. And color. Um, I have a video that I'm working on right now <clears throat> about an Apple Studio Display CRT ADC. It's a mouthful of a name. Um, Apple's last CRT. Really beautiful looking, you know, design of a CRT. And it was the first time I've ever kind of worked on an Apple CRT software-wise. And if you click on the color or, I don't know, there's a bunch of other adjustments you can make to it. Um, you can go, like, super in-depth with all the color calibrations and geometry and all sorts of stuff. And it's all it only shows up when you have a compatible monitor and I'd never seen that before and it's just kinda cool to have all those options available to you a lot of uh... Oh, look, 20th anniversary Macintosh, nice cool, alright, nothing much to see in here, what's under calibrate? let's see no, oh, it's this thing, no I don't want to do that Eep. I started looking at System Profiler and I feel like there was something else I wanted to look at. Maybe not. I'm... <laughs> this is gonna sound so nerdy and stupid. I'm kind of considering while I'm working down here, like, having this off to the side just powered on because the... the sound of that hard drive spinning quietly uh, very nostalgic and kind of comforting in a weird way. Uh, it sounds really dorky, but I don't know. There, there's something about it that it's just kind of kind of nice to listen to. So we're looking at devices and volumes. We had an 810 meg hard drive uh, display. Eh. I guess there was nothing else. I can't tell if this is getting darker. It was getting darker. This freaking webcam is so irritating. <laughs> There's no way to adjust it. It just kind of does what it wants, and I don't know. All right, let's see if there are any uh, cool programs or games on here. I'm assuming they'd just be in the Applications folder. Um, applications and Templates? What is that? I guess it's nothing. I guess there is nothing in there. Multimedia Options for your Mac. Demo Frames Multimedia Tour. Don't know what this is, but let's try it. Special Delivery Player. I have never heard of this. Come on, camera. Quit dicking around. <laughs> multimedia options for your advanced multimedia computer. Wow. 
oh, this is kind of cool. You know, I'm, before I have to, you know, erase this disc, I'm probably going to save this. I don't know if this has been archived anywhere. This is kind of cool. Let's look at other cool options. I see a quick take. I see what looks like an Ethernet interface card. Maybe a, a RAM doubler here. I guess we'll find out. Oh, that, that took forever for that transition to happen. So we have Apple, I think these are multimedia speakers. Maybe that's their official name. Got a, what is that, a desk jet? No, it's an HP name. Apple Color something? I don't really know my printers. External speakers. Apple Design, that's what it was. Call now. How do I go back? Home? Is that what I want? Stop? Nope, that just closes the whole thing. Damn it. Let's open it up again. I'm going to turn off this light. I don't think that light did anything. I think that made it just more difficult for the camera to do things. All right, other cool options. So, um, a quick aside, just about seeing this quick take kind of reminded me of it. At work, we got in two boxed quick takes. They're not new, but they're in very good condition. They had all the software, all the cables, two memory cards each. And uh, one of them even had a couple pictures that were probably taken by accident. It was taken, like, if you set the camera next to the keyboard, excuse me, of, um, of a Bondi iMac G3 and the keyboard. You can kind of see it in the frame. I just thought that was kind of cool. It had a date code of 2000. 2000. Yeah, 2000. It was just kind of cool to see a photo that old from a time when that kind of thing was new. Quick take digital camera. Alright. Home? Does that just bring me back? No, that brings me home. What a terrible interface. <laughs> That's so bad. Apple TV video system. I've seen one of these before. Never actually used one, though. Apple Video System. What's different about this? Let's you capture video images with your Macintosh. So it's just recording software, possibly? Oh, well, I guess this will answer my question, won't it? What can I do with this? I can take still images from a video? <laughs> You can easily connect most video devices to your computer, such as a camcorder, VCR, laser disc, cutting edge, and a video game player. View the video footage on your display. Interesting. It's a nice uh, Apple multi-scan display shown right there. Apple presentation system. Ah, let's look at the last one. Why not? I used to own one of these. It was not in good shape. It was actually in rather terrible condition. I think it was missing the power cord, missing the manuals, but it had the box and the actual interface itself. It was many years ago. All right, well, that's cool. I'll have to save that file and uh, upload it to archive.org. That's pretty neat. What else do we have? Got some utilities, CPU energy saver. I can't imagine this CPU draws that much energy. <coughs> Not installed. Turn off the computer when it is idle. Okay, well I guess that makes sense. The way it, it said CPU kind of made it sound like it would clock down the processor or something. White balance thing. Whatever. I'm over it. Let's see if I make this smaller. Hey, that helped. 
Hyper card player. Oh, Eric Solitaire Sampler. Something I've seen on just about every Mac ever. <laughs> I don't know what's up with the black bars now. That was doing pretty good up until just now. Hmm. Alrighty. Now why is it done that? I fixed it. <laughs> I'm a genius. Newton demo. Newton demo. This is so cool. Actually, I I own a Newton now. Well, um, I don't know if this is actually a Newton. I guess this is it's an E-Mate, but I own one of these. Let's swap the camera for a second. I am um, whoop this way. I own one of these. It's very dusty, but it's otherwise in very good condition. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a power cord to use with it yet, so I haven't been able to turn it on and test it. There you go. Got one of those. It's a very interesting design. Um, I just realized it doesn't have the pen with it. That's a bit of a bummer. But anyway need somewhere to put it put it right there I guess yeah I was excited to find that that's gonna be fun to play around with all right what's this say your computer is currently using virtual memory Newton demo cannot run when virtual memory is on why not why not just not use the demo or not use the virtual memory um, I really want to see what this is so we're gonna do what it says and disable virtual memory and then restart the computer and wait, I don't know, 16 years for it to start back up. Um, virtual memory off. And I'm, I'm going to assume this thing <laughs> greatly benefits from virtual memory, given that it only has 64 megs. This floppy disk out of here. This almost looks like a brand new... A swap. This almost looks like a brand new floppy disk, too. Hmm. I'll be sure to put that on top of a magnet for safekeeping. For the uh, four or five of you that are in here right now, is there anything you want me to do with this while I have it up on the desk? I'm just kind of poking around with it right now, but if you want... I don't know, to see software on it or something, I'll do my best to maybe burn some software, get it on there somehow. While I'm waiting for that, let's see what the model of the other Mac is. So the other one is a Power Mac 5500 slash 225, which uh, it's in the same same exact chassis style as this, the all-in-one with the, the speakers on the front, but I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the, that one has a 225 megahertz um, CPU. It's probably a little bit more, a little more... Well, I guess a lot more CPU power, probably twice the amount of RAM, bigger hard drive. You know what? I don't have to ask these questions. I can just look this... I can look this up. 5500 slash 225. Damn, I'm a genius. So it shipped with 32 meg of RAM, uh, 2 gig hard drive, graphics acceleration. Wow. And this one says, originally, this model was sold exclusively to the North American education market, but Apple noticed interest among consumers and released it to the consumer market, too. <laughs> Eep scared me a little bit. <laughs> um, I think I started up the other Power Mac as well, and it seems to be of... 
have only been used. Come on, camera. I gotta figure out a solution for that. Oh, this is paint, by the way. I've got paint all over my hands from painting something today. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, um, Newton demo. Does it have a paint program? Draw a picture. I will look, and I will draw a picture if it has one. I hope this has sound. That would be cool. This brightness issue is starting to <laughs> irritate me a little bit. Come on, there. Cool. It's a pretty cool demo. I'd buy one. Alright, Newton introduction. Go to main menu. Software titles, solution packs, personalizing, and introduction. Let's look at some software for the Newton. Um, entertainment. Oh, still loading. Hold on. Only working with 75 megahertz here. Dell. Oh. I was I forgot Dell is a like a, a name for I don't know a crossword puzzle manufacturer or books or something. I remember seeing that on on books back in the day. My dog got up. Now I have to pet him. Hey Max, you want to come up here? Come on, ready? Good boy. Good boy. Hi Max. Do you like working on vintage Apple stuff, too? Why don't you sit? Sit down. Good boy. Crossword puzzles. What do those look like on the Newton? They look interesting. <laughs> well, be really cool, although I would never expect it, is if you could, um, if you could emulate the Newton on here through this interface, that would be pretty cool. Alright, this is not as interesting as I thought, but it is still extremely cool to see this. Let's quit this demo, look for something else, something a little more interesting. If this is something that anybody would like to see shown off in like its own video, um, please let me know, because I am going to save the software if it's not already available. But I would, um, you know, it's already installed and it's on a computer. <laughs> so if somebody wants to see it in action in its own video, let me know. That was, that was an interesting demo. Max, why don't you sit down? You don't have to stand. You can sit. You're a good boy. You know how to sit. 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 There you go. There you go. Good boy. Alright. What else do we have? Diamond extras? What is that? Pre-recorded greetings. Maybe an answering machine? Virtual answering machine? Ooh, celebrity greetings? That sounds interesting. Alright. You have my interest. Let's see what we have. Bill Clinton greeting? Oh boy. This is probably going to be loud, just so you, you all know. Oh, 
you bastard. Cannot be open because Supra voicemail. I saw that folder somewhere else. Let's see if I can locate it and open it. Where did I see that? Maybe under utilities? No, not under there. I, I remember seeing this. We're going to find this. Ah, I've got this. Sherlock. This may be a mistake. This may take literally forever. But we will see. Documents. Oh, you know what? I think it was Supra VM data that I saw. Hmm. Well, maybe there's no application on there. Oh well. It's a bit of a bummer. Hey Max. You wanna look at the camera? You're adorable. Okay, where were we at? We were down here. I really wish I could listen to those things. That that sounds like it would be kind of funny. Ah, oh, well. I'm going to archive this hard drive anyway, so... We'll see. Stuff at Expander... It does have stuff at Expander on here. Let's see what happens if I drop this and try to unpack it. It would be really cool to play Oregon Trail on this. Hi, Max. You're being extra cuddly today. Eep. Wild Leap. Um, one of the files you tried to expand could have been expanded if you had it installed. Alert. Nah, you shut up. All right. Oh wait, no, it, it did work. It's already expanded over here. So it's an image. I wonder if I can open that with disk utility. Max, lay down. You seem so distressed, but you won't lay down. <clears throat> Okay, I'll let you down. You're a good boy. Oh, that's the wrong mouse. I'll be honest, it's been so long since I've made a floppy disk on classic Mac OS, I don't actually remember how to do that. Sherlock again. There's some program you can use to write them, and I, I like it has the word image in it, maybe. I don't know. Looks like it's probably not going to happen. That's alright. All is well. Banner Mania. That sounds fun. And it looks like they got their money out of it. They definitely made a lot of banners. Um... I don't know. Let's do a happy birthday number seven. Let's see what that looks like. Cordy in the chat says, hey, what's up? Working on some Macs. Kind of the best thing ever. 
Pathfinders celebrating 30 years of excellence. So, that's a thing. Wasn't that cool? Now, can you can you just hear that banner being printed on a dot matrix printer and taking like hours for it to print out? Those were the days. My sound one. I don't want this too loud in case it's like something important. Uh, of course, an error would occur. All right. Oop. Screw it. <laughs> Whatever. Super VM data. Is there maybe a program in here that I can open and play that file with from earlier? No. No, there is nothing there. Bummer. And utilities was nothing either. All right. Well, I guess I pretty much done all there is to do on this computer. Let's eject that disk from earlier. So this has just a couple files for Oregon Trail on it, which I guess I don't really need. Come on, white balance. Eh, oh, eh, eh, eh. Nope. <laughs> it's just gonna be white. Oh boy. Um, so yeah, I'm, I don't need this. I think I'm just gonna toss that. If I need them again, I'll just burn more files to the disk. Nerdy Organist. Haven't seen your name in a while. Welcome to the live stream. Um, I recently got an Okidata dot matrix printer now in the mood to print a banner yes um i think it was lgr that printed out a banner of like had like a hot dog on it or something i don't know it was really silly but um he did that on a color dot matrix and it took i don't know 30 minutes 45 minutes to print the whole thing definitely worth a watch if you have literally nothing else to do than watch a banner reprinted in real time but I do, I, I kind of wish I had a dot matrix printer for any of these old machines around here. I just, I would never get enough enjoyment out of it to actually own one. Um, I've owned a few in the past, and they've worked just fine. I just, I hook them up, I print a test page, and that's all I print, because what else am I realistically going to print? But yeah, that would be cool to have, um, maybe even an Apple printer. I'm, I kick myself. I'm going to see if I can find a photo of this because I had a pretty good collection of Apple printers. Um, there were a bunch of laser printers and, um, laser printers, I guess just ribbon printers, inkjet printers as well. And uh, I threw them all out, like, seven years ago. And I wish I had saved at least a couple of them, or at least tried to sell them. I honestly did not think those printers were worth anything. Uh, sold stuff. Did I sell these? No. So they're probably not going to be in here. Hmm. Yeah, don't know if I'll be able to find that. Captain Crunch says, There's a computer store here that still prints receipts on a dot matrix printer. I have personally seen uh, one, maybe two auto shops, like car repair shops, that have one of those either in the back next to some diagnostic tool or in the, the main office and they're still printing out invoices with a dot matrix printer and that that's cool <laughs> it's kind of cool that those things can still be used i oh it's probably in the folder called apple printers let's see if i can set up oh there's nothing in here hmm 
That's disappointing. All these folders are empty. What the actual hell? All these folders I had of, uh, of sold items that I kept just because I'm weird, they're all empty. Huh. That's, uh, that's no bueno. Wonder if it's just a file sharing issue. Let's see if I can log into my remote desktop and see if those files exist. If not, <laughs> who the hell knows when those went away? They might, they might not even be in a backup that I have. I won't mess around with this for too long on on the stream, but I want to do it now so I know if that is all gone. Now where was it? sold stuff. And Apple printers, this folder is empty. Well, that's unfortunate. But this is why you have backups and you check your backups. Because I think all those photos are probably gone now. Uh, I rescued this one, referring to the dot matrix printer, from an auto parts store that went out of business. Also had a print server attached to the parallel port. So I'm using NetShare on my DOS machines to share it over the network. That's pretty cool. That's a, I wouldn't say a goal for me, but something that if I had all that stuff, I would also probably want to do. Set up a print server, um, be able to print to it from the network. That's pretty neat. Um, all right, where are we at with this? I guess I pretty much looked at everything software wise. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down, and I want to take a quick look at the the motherboard and see what the condition of it is, if it's really dirty, if anything has leaked, if um, I need to recap it, perhaps. Let's see what I can do as far as framing. i got to pick this up and move it. Screwdriver. So let's take this thing apart and see what it has in store. So I haven't taken this thing apart yet, and for some reason, I, I guess I had it in my mind that this was more like a like a Performa 550, which I've owned in the past, which has uh, like kind of half of this back panel and it's got little tabs on it and um, you pull it off and the motherboard comes out for some reason I thought it looked like that this is a much larger back panel um, am I using OBS yes I'm using OBS ah, shoot it's all right I found the screw These screws are not magnetic, or the screwdriver is not magnetic. Alright, how does this come off? There's no tabs on it. Oh, I lied. There are tabs on it. I'm actually going to show this on camera, because why not? So yeah, there's tabs underneath here, right here, and um, just ever so slightly on the side of the frame there. That was not a good sound. That was probably a very loud sound, and that is not a good sound. Yep, I broke it. I I don't know why I didn't think that that would happen, given that when I touch this thing, it like crunches and sounds all crispy. Well, that's a bummer. This one came off nicely, though, so we've got that going for us. Crap. It's okay. Everything is fine. So there's the back panel. Uh, much larger, again, than I 
thought it would be. But there it is. Um, it seems like it weighs a lot less now that this isn't on here. I'm just kidding. Yep, busted that right off. Um, definitely can be glued. No reason why that couldn't be glued. It just wouldn't really be structural anymore. Oh well. Anyway, so I guess this is what I was thinking of um, as far as the layout on... And I have one of these sitting under my desk at work I haven't brought home yet. It's an old Performa 62-something CD, but the motherboard is underneath, and the hard drive and the optical drive are accessible from the top. Or rather, no, from the front. Anyway, the motherboard's on the bottom. I'm confused. <laughs> That's about the moral of the story. All right. Let's pull this board out. Set that over there. Now, will this be easy? I do not know. Yes, quite easy. And there it is. So there we've got the board. Good enough. So, at a quick glance, I'll have to bring this up here. I don't see any issues at all. I don't see any evidence of leaking capacitors. The battery is one of these, um, one of these, I don't even know what you call it. It's not socketed, but it's just Velcroed on and then connected through a wire. And that hasn't leaked or anything. Not that these usually do. Huh. Cool. It's nice to see one of these in good shape. The only kind of sign of wear that I see is on the top of this component here. Might be able to tell if it focuses, but there's a little bit of rust. It's kind of brown colored instead of being silver. But that's it. That is everything. So this has two, um, two 32 megabyte SIMs in it. And I recently brought home a very large box of RAM. Like hundreds and hundreds of pieces. And I'm curious if I could find, I'm not going to do it right now, but if I could find some, some SIMs to put in there. The bump is up to like 128, which I think is the maximum amount of RAM. That would be pretty sweet. If I did that, it would come in a another video, probably, you know, refurbishing this thing, getting it wiped and everything after I've taken all the software I need off of it. Um, what am I looking for? RAM. RAM, RAM, RAM. So this one says maximum of 64 megs of RAM which is probably accurate. So I guess the thing is maxed out at 64 megs of RAM. Wow. Not exactly a performance machine, even for 1994? When was this made? 1995. I mean, certainly an acceptable amount of RAM for the time, but still, I mean... That's not a lot. All right, so that's good. The uh, The board looks to be in good shape, so I'm comfortable putting that back in. And since there's really no path for RAM upgrades, unless you could maybe shoehorn 128 megs in there, um, I guess there are no upgrades I can do to this. I'm going to leave the original hard drive in because I don't have another one is this IDE or is it SCSI? I, I think it's SCSI. You know what? That looks like IDE. Back to my spec sheets. And hard drive interface IDE. Huh. And it even says it does not support a SCSI drive. So, I could probably pull from my stash a quieter and newer and faster hard drive 
and install that in here if I wanted to and keep this old Apple drive so whether I could archive it or um, keep it around for another project. We'll see what I end up doing with that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know what to do with that yet. But that's cool that it's IDE. That means archiving it will be even easier. All I have to do is just hook it up to um, one of my computers here and image it. Or capture an image of it. Neato Mosquito. Alright, well... Oh, crap. No, oh, no, I lost the piece. Oh, no, I didn't. Um, I'm going to tape this piece to the... To, what the hell is going on? To the inside, so that I don't lose it. And... If somebody else... Was that really loud? I saw my microphone go red. Um, if the next owner wants to mess with it, attach it again, then that's something they can do, but I'm not going to deal with it because it's probably just going to break again, let's be honest. go got the one side clipped on and then I can put the screws back in newer faster hard drive with no moving parts is it even technically a hard drive at that point are solid-state drives technically hard drives or are they just their own thing that's a legitimate question I I don't know <laughs> covers back on this thing is is ready to go um, I guess I'll have to take it apart again to get at that hard drive and take some files off maybe I can just put them on a, a floppy disk get them off there the files can't be that big all right well what would you all like to see next I think we're we're a little over an hour in I suppose we could take a look at that other Power Mac 5500 all-in-one. Same chassis style as this one, but a little bit faster, a little bit newer. What, I guess, if that's something you want to see, let me know. Get this out of here. Right. Now because nobody said anything, probably because you haven't actually heard it yet because of the delay, I'm just going to put the other one up here and do it anyway. So you get to see it either way. Okay. So. Power Mac 5500 slash 225. Around the back looks largely the same except we have an Ethernet port. So this one could be networked if that's something I wanted to do. That's cool. But otherwise it looks pretty much the same. Um, the sticker is different and it has a 1997 date code. Might as well open this up while I've got it turned around. Oh. Man, these things are so heavy. So I took off two. I guess this one is part of what's holding it on as well. Yep. I think this has been taken apart before. I can see the plastic here. Can you see that? Yeah, I kind of see that. It's bowed out and doesn't quite fit flush with the this blanking plate. 
or the port. If I look at it from, from the angle I'm looking at it, I can see that it kind of bows out a little bit there. Not sure what that's about. And this one also has those freaking plastic tabs. I gotta do this very carefully if I can. Oh, I heard a crack. And that there there are things in life that are stressful and then there is another tier above that which is moving vintage max and those are stressful alrighty um, yet again we have another IDE drive that's cool again makes archiving it very easy um, I'm just trying to figure out the the screw situation. So I don't think the last one on this back panel had a screw uh, there. And this screw was, was through that and it holds in the motherboard. But I notice... Huh. So I think on the other one, the motherboard tray was held in by that screw. And in this one, the motherboard tray isn't held in by anything other than, I assume, the back plate being on there. So I can just pull it out without having to remove another screw. And here we are with the motherboard. I'm going to have a quick look up close first. Yeah, seems clean to me. Carbon bond... Try that word again. Carbon bonds breaking down in the polymer. Sad for vintage Macs and car interiors. I assume that's referring to the breaking plastics. Yeah, it is a shame. But it is what it is now. So this board is also very clean. Um, has some definite dust build up around that battery but the battery looks good and yeah everything looks good interesting to me because I have never poked around inside of one of these um, all-in-one performas or power max I keep saying performa probably said that like 10 times today I thought this would have a um, I want to say PDS slot but that's not the right word I think this is the PDS card, maybe. The, th the thing with all those, um, the slot with all the whole, new bus, there we go, new bus. I thought this would have a new bus slot like the uh, 5200 had, but it's actually got a PCI slot and a 90 degree PCI riser. So you could put a PCI card in here, although that would very much interfere with airflow. Let's see if I can... There. Yeah, you put a card in there, no airflow in that fan. And then remove one of these brackets over here and you'd be able to to shoot it out the back there. So that's kind of cool. I just didn't expect it to have a PCI slot. Huh. So this has um, cash... Oh. There's some broken plastic. Don't know where that came from. Cache module, it appears, and one stick of memory. I can't really tell what it is from just looking at it. Um, it shipped with 32 megs from the factory, so it's probably still 32 megs. I don't know if I have any memory to put in this. Um, the type of memory that this is escapes my mind at the moment. I want to say EDO, but... It might not be EDO. So I don't know if I have anything to upgrade this with. It may just have to stay at 32 megs. Well, that's cool. Um, unlike the other one, I don't see any signs of rust or anything like that on here. Probably not going to upgrade this one either. Just keep it as it oh oh did you hear the sound 
I was being pretty careful too. Yep. There goes that tab. Look like that. That looks like that. Oh no. This is a disaster. I mean, I can't say I didn't expect that. Even picking this up, like, You can hear it cracking <laughs> as you move it. Um, you know what? That might be part of the chassis now. I think it went back in this hole and kind of went in. I'm going to ignore that and pretend like that never happened. Gingerly. Gingerly. We're not going to touch that anymore. Man, that sucks. Again, knew that would happen, but it still is shocking and saddening at the same time whenever it does actually happen. Alrighty. So look, thinking back on this, I'm pretty sure that I had started this one up before. And it did have quite a lot of personal information on it. So before I show the screen, after we get to the desktop, um, I'm going to try to shove all those folders into a, or files into a folder so that they're not visible or just throw them in the trash. I mean, I'm not going to use those files with personal information on them. Um, one thing I want to point out, which I guess you'll probably see in this view, is the difference in color. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very noticeable there. So this front bezel, but just the one around the screen, is um, a noticeably different color. Excuse me, I have hiccups now. Um, noticeably different color than this bezel below it, but even more different than the rest of the chassis, which is extremely yellow. It's just strange how this part didn't yellow, um, but the rest of it did. It's weird. My dash has multiple cracks and rattles in it now. Uh, I drive a 93 Miata as my summer car, so I know exactly how that is. Luckily, we have 3D printing. Could make a replacement if necessary, yes. And if you look behind me, right right there, 3D printer. Um, it works, I just haven't used it in quite some time. I had a 486 Presario all-in-one with a similar design. Motherboard slid out of a tray in the back. I remember seeing those, and I see those occasionally on some of the vintage computer subreddits. Um, yeah, it is a very similar design, actually. Speakers on the front, optical drive and floppy drive kind of right here under the screen. I wonder where Compaq got that idea. Or I should say, I wonder where Apple got that idea. Who knows? Oh, you're a heavy bitch. Okay. Alrighty. Now this is a... Am I, what is making noise? I feel like my computer is getting hot. Oh yeah, she's getting hot. That's alright. Um, this is a 5500 and it is two years or three years newer than the other p machine. So I think this will have a different startup sound. Um, one more like what we're used to now for the Mac startup sound on uh, modern Macs, but it'll be a slightly different tone, I think. I think. Let's power it on. Yep. It has a slightly higher pitch to it. Do you hear that? I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was probably so freaking loud. 
Oh my god, that was probably loud. My, uh... My mic stand just fell off of where it was mounted to. Anyway, listen to my loud Mac. Yeah, it's loud. That was totally worth breaking my mic stand for. Ay ay ay. Well now what do I do? Hold please. I'm gonna have to put this microphone down. Let's see if I can mute it first. Intermission. Okay, so what did we learn? Uh, don't do that. Yeah, that was not my greatest moment. It's also not the greatest mounting system, if I'm completely honest. In fact, it's rather awful. I should probably come up with literally anything else other than that. Uh, you know what? There it goes again. Bummer. If I put this against the wall, maybe, maybe it'll stay. No, it's about to fall. <laughs> ah, crap. All right, well, I'm going to put this on a microphone stand, so I'll be right back. All right. Hopefully everyone can still hear me. I uh I cannot for the life of me. Wow, that looks really terrible. Wonder how long it's been doing that. Um I cannot get this Of course it's going to show the thing on the screen. Grr, frustrated. I cannot get this microphone out of this mount. This is probably the worst mount I could have purchased. It cost me like $15 and I put a hundred dollar microphone on it because that's smart and uh, 
while trying to get the microphone back out, it has now clamped itself so tight onto the microphone that I can't get it off. And I've already put a nice little gouge in my mic because I tried digging at it with a screwdriver and that didn't work. So, yeah, that's, that's fun. Anyway, vintage Mac stuff. All of this is going to go into a folder. So that we don't have to look at it. Okay. Back to the Mac. I need to adjust this refresh rate so it doesn't look so terrible on the screen because that is pretty terrible. Um, what does this say? 800 by 600, 50 hertz, simul scan? I've never heard of that. There it goes. Much better. I need more icons on my desktop, yes. Yes, because that is what you do with the desktop. You just throw shit around it for no reason. Just clutter that thing right up. Microphone for sale includes mic stand, lightly used. Okay. I'm interested in what this simul scan is. I've never heard that term before. Yeah, that looks alright on camera. Okay. So this supports millions of colors, so it has a much better either screen or um, graphics chipset than the previous machine. God, I am all flustered now. <laughs> this microphone thing really... Uh, Alright. There is the sound like I'm used to. Alrighty. Yep. Cool. So this screen, as well as the last one, looks really good. Uh, color is great. Sharpness is great. The geometry is... good. <laughs> I, I can't tell if it's slightly shifted this way and down, but uh, the, the shape of it is fine. Let's see what we have for memory. 32 megs of RAM. I guess we already knew that, though. System profiler. Was that 11 megs of RAM used for the system? So half the RAM is already used up. Well, almost half the RAM. I guess it's not just the hard drive in here that's noisy. It's also the, um, the fan. The system fan is quite loud. So we have Mac OS 8.6, which I think is the same as the last one, isn't it? Um, PowerPC 603EV at 225 MHz. Nice. Have an Ethernet card installed. I guess it doesn't say in here that that is installed. Devices and volumes. This says it'll have 2 gig hard drive according to everymac.com. Yep, unformatted 2 gig. What is this thing called? VHNFH? I think maybe somebody just was typing letters. Ooh, a quantum fireball. Ew. I have not personally had very good luck with those. Simulscan has something to do with outputting the display to a TV. Does this have video outputs? 
No, it does not. So maybe as an optional thing, you could output it to a TV. I guess not in the current state. I don't think that would be possible. Display. Well, we already know what the display is. Trying to go back to my every Mac page on the 5500 to answer a question that I'm asking myself. So the the 5200 can output video, <clears throat> excuse me, through a card in the PDS slot. And this one, where is it? maximum resolution it says it can mirror the screen at its current resolution which is a max of 832 by 624 I'm not sure how you would go about doing that if that would be through that PCI slot or something else I guess I don't know what else there would even be but that's cool that you can connect an external monitor to this uh, it can support up to 128 megs of RAM, so if I do have some extra sticks of RAM in that box that I brought home, I might be upgrading this. My hopes are not high though. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is not standard like um, SD RAM like you'd find in a PC. It's something different um, instead of. It's like instead of 168 pin, it's 170, something like that. I don't know. Somebody else will probably know. And this thing, according to everymac.com, weighs 47 pounds, and I believe it. I wonder how loud that clicking is. That's got to be pretty annoying. Speaking of computers that weigh a lot, the iMac G4 20 inch that I have, the one that's in immaculate condition, that one weighs over 40 pounds. And I mean, it's definitely heavy. You definitely know that picking it up, but it isn't until you pick up a 15 or a 17 inch and then pick up the 20 inch that you realize how heavy that 20 inch iMac really is. And I imagine it just has to do with the added weight necessary for a larger screen. That has to be it. Because there's nothing different inside um, that would make it weigh that much more. Okay, that's Apple Talk. For some reason that looked like a display, like a display mirroring something. Um, not going to look through their files at all. We've got the weirdly named hard drive and then I I mean <laughs> your guess is as good as mine as to what that says I don't know the G4 series is so chonky you know it really is now that you say that I think every G4 well maybe not a lot of the G4s were pretty chonky um, the Emac huge. I mean, just massive. Those things weigh, what, 50 pounds? The iMac G4, even the smaller ones are pretty heavy for what they are. But the 20 inches, I said, is um, is 40 pounds. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, I recently re refurbished, and I'll actually show it on camera here as kind of a preview. Sorry, the microphone is attached to the camera now. Yeah, you can. Oh, hi, puppy. You're in the shot now. That is what I'm trying to point at down there. The Studio Display CRT. Very nice find. Um, that, of course, is huge and weighs a ton because it's not only a CRT, but it's just a big CRT. 
the G4 Cube, which I acquired recently, is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, even when you, you know, hear the specifications and, and read the literature that says it's an 8-inch cube, you have an idea of how big that is, but it isn't until I owned one of the G4 Cubes and put it up on the desk that I realized how big that really is. <laughs> it is quite large. Max, what are you doing? Do you want to come up here again? Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you ready? Ready? We. There you go. Good boy. Thanks, Max. Thanks, buddy. Does it have a ballast weight in the bottom so it doesn't tip over? Not in the the, the tray at the bottom. I guess the bottom cover, you'd call it. It doesn't have anything in there. Um, I guess it would just be the, the chassis that has it. It's made of, what, cast aluminum or something? And I would assume it's just thicker and maybe slightly different size. No, you know what? They look like the same size. I have a 17 and a 20 inch here. And they look the same, um, other than the screen, of course. It must just be a thicker cage. I don't know. I don't know why it weighs so much more, but it definitely does. Does Max like Max? Hey, what's this? What's that? He's indifferent. <laughs> That's what I'm getting from this. You want to say hi to the people? Yeah. Max does not like being in the basement very much. He usually sits in his bed down here and just sleeps. Uh, it's, it's one of the only times he just lays down, curls up in a ball, and sleeps. I don't know if it makes him anxious, if he just doesn't like it down here, but, yeah. Max, you're awfully cuddly today. You usually don't let me do this. Thanks, buddy. Okay, uh, let's take a look at some of the applications on the 5500. See if there's anything of interest. Probably not going to stream for a ton of time. Probably another 15 minutes or so. And then I'll head off. It is getting pretty late. It's 11.30 where I am. Oh my god, I didn't realize it was 11.30. Max probably needs to potty and is probably ready to go to bed. Okay, so, applications. What do we have in here? Banner Mania, again. Same thing as last time. Solitaire Sampler. iOmegaWare. Tools, so maybe they had a zip drive or something. Date modified, 2000. I do wonder how long this has been um, unused. TV Tuner Guide Editions. Did you hear? Well, I guess you wouldn't have heard it. Did you see a flicker in the screen? I couldn't quite tell in the preview, but I heard a click, like um, like a warming CRT and <laughs> getting very warm, getting ready to pop. We'll hope that doesn't happen. Kensington. Kensington Mouse Works. So they had a aftermarket mouse attached to this. I've never heard of this program or even opened it. Let's go ahead and open that. Now oh, some that looks like they may have had a trackball. That's cool. I'm still not sure what these were actually used for, if they were used for anything other than personal use. Maybe just minor office work. I, I don't know. I don't really know where they came from. I could probably read all the files on it and find out, but I don't really want to do that. PPC 5200 SIS. So that's PowerPC 5200 maybe? No, maybe not. Max, 
You're a good boy. Do you want to get down again? Okay. And down. Good boy. You're a good boy. We'll go upstairs soon, Max. I see you. I see you giving me puppy dog eyes. Well, oh, I guess I missed a couple files. Eh, whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, this one doesn't have all that much to speak of on it. I don't see much that's very interesting. It's kind of a bummer. Does this CD drive work? Yep, this one ejects just fine. The other one definitely did not. I will say this one is in slightly worse condition. It was either used more or not treated as well, but um, physical condition not as great. Although I will say, this one has both of its plastic tabs on the back, which is more than I can say for the 5200. I don't know who did that. Definitely wasn't me. Yeah. Well, I can't think of anything else to say about this machine, so I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. Get myself back in frame. So, I've been going for about an hour and 45 minutes. I'm probably going to end it pretty soon. Is there anything else anybody would like to see, either about these Macs that I've shown off today, or anything else? I'm, I'm gesturing as if you can see everything here. But uh, anything else anybody wants to maybe see before we go? Now's your last chance. Man, this thing is so crispy. <laughs> Very gamer gaming. I'm not sure what that means. Gamer gaming. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that comment. I also don't know how long of a delay there is, so I don't know how long I should be waiting. A lot of not knowing things today. Well, Max looks like he needs to go potty. He's whining and being upset. So I think... I think I'm going to sign off for tonight. Take the dog out, go to bed. And that's probably about it. Um, yeah, I've got... The uh, G4 Cube and the Apple Studio Display ADC um, monitor project. I'm making a video and it's in progress and I just need to do the voiceover with my microphone that is now laying on my bench. So uh, that's going to happen at some point. Probably not tomorrow, but it, it's been in the works for a couple months and I really just want to be done with it because it's a nice video but it's it's taken way too long. So anyway, that's what you have to forward what you have to look forward to. Those are the words I wanted to come out. And I guess that's it. So I I I have I have questions and I feel like I know the answers, but Yes. <laughs> Not doing that on YouTube. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Um, we'll see you in the next video or the next live stream. I do enjoy doing these. I realize that I can do them now. So maybe I'll do more of these. We'll find out. Thank you all very much for watching. As I just said, we'll see you in the next video.